Hi guys, I thought you might want to know a little bit more about visual abstracts and my good friend Amanda Charlton has put together something called a notion where she has gathered together a whole lot of information about visual abstracts and she's created a whole bunch of visual abstracts. So let's check them out. Basically, visual abstracts are an intention hook for deeper learning. There's a few emerging resources on this. It's important that visual abstracts have certain uh, elements and the rationale behind them are listed here. You want to clearly articulate the question or the purpose of the study, describe the design and the primary outcome should be front and centre. Report p-values when they're relevant. Label citation of the articles in the image at the bottom of the image, usually. And use language that is consistent with your scientific outputs. Only use images for which you have the rights. And get someone else to look at it. So that's what they've been doing in the Annals of Thoracic Surgery. They've been following these guidelines including this one here, this external review. There's podcasts, visual galleries, I like this mouse. Right, so really simple. You want a big fat image that tells the story and hooks in the reader or the viewer. And you want to limit the amount of words on your visual abstract. Amanda's identified a few PowerPoint templates that people can use from Boston University. That's worth noticing. I don't like the color though. Oh, and here's color palettes. <laughs> so you can even identify what's trending in terms of the colors that you use on your visual, uh, visual abstracts. This chap here has done quite a lot in the field of visual abstracts and um, offers some tools for how to put some together. There's a couple that I've put together as well. And here we go. So Amanda's created this one. Reading the text does not engage learners today, but give them a crazy picture and they'll take it in and they'll have a bit of fun while they do it. So here the super simplified. If you change the color, what does that do? Different, there's a whole lot of science behind the different use of colors. And you see here, we're going for minimal amount of words and these icons, these are just simple snappy icons. There's word art here. Look at this. So Amanda did a literature review on Serious Play Lego. And there's some really pretty pictures. I like this one a lot because it's really colorful and because it has recognizable Lego type people on it. Here's another way to present the information graphically. And here we go again. And here it is in the templates with the yellow colouring again.
So this is a mock-up of a potential visual abstract using the medical journal template. This is what it would look like as opposed to creating our own template. So this is the same information presented in heaps of different ways. I really like this one here. For me, that's got lots, it's got enough going on that it makes it engaging and I want to look at it and I want to learn more, but it's not text heavy and it hasn't got too many little boxes. Whereas I think this one has got a bit more going on and the text is necessarily smaller. This font is tiny, as Amanda has noted. So yeah, there's lots of ins and outs with a visual abstract. Check this out. This is like an explainer, the explainer videos that are trending at the moment. These icons are from Common Craft. Transition to online teaching. Dissolution. <laughs> Yeah, I like having the emojis on the spectrum from positive to negative. More support, less support. But usually we would have the negative on the left hand side and the positive on the right hand side um, in Western society, not necessarily in other societies because we tend to go from left to right, from negative to positive. Here we go, look, if we move this into the centre, what does it do? This is a great exploration, I love it. Ah, and look, see we've got this step, things getting more useful, see, less uh, negative to positive. I like this step works really well. You can have a few steps. And this is getting a bit more wordy though down here. So there really is an art to creating a strong visual abstract. And as we've seen through here, there's a whole lot of things to consider like your color palette and the amount of images you have, the size of the images, the size of the font, um, the order of the images where you put them, all kinds of things can make a big difference to your visual abstract. There's heaps of um, great examples that Amanda's put together here. You can get some really cool stuff Ooh. on eyes. Five steps on how to be more like more pirate. <laughs> Break a stupid rule, rewrite the rule. <laughs> I love this. There's a pirate lurking inside us all. <laughs> See, for me personally, I really do think that the words did actually capture my attention. And this icon here probably captures my attention more than the others. But I like um, the big fat answer to everything, you know, you just got to be more like a pirate. <laughs> That's cool. Very cool. Anyway, so just wanted to alert you to um, some of these more detailed ways of thinking about success with visual abstracts. Hope you have fun taking on board some of this information to create your own. Cheers.